Hey guys, this is Brody Whitlock with another 4-Minute Friday. Today we're going to be looking at some things in Autodesk Revit software, of course, that software for architecture. And today we're going to be covering how to edit a Revit family lookup table. So I know you guys have probably loaded things in and wonder how you can get to those items and edit them. So right now I just created a simple parametric model. Everything's functioning properly as far as that goes. You know the best practice there is to go ahead and test out your reference lines first with your dimensions and then work on the other items like creating the form and stuff like that. So right now as you can see I just have table A and all of my items are listed in my dimensions that are constricted or my parametric elements. So now I'm going to go up and I'm going to export my family types. And what this does is it exports it to a CSV. And an easier way to look at it would be um, through Excel. So that's what we're going to be using. However, I will show you guys what it looks like whenever you pull it up in just your notepad. As you can see, it's a little confusing. And up near the top, um, you always want to make sure there's a comma in front of your first uh, your first measurement header, basically. All right, while I'm opening up Excel, I'm going to create a new workbook. One thing that's beneficial is you have to make sure that that CSV file is going to be in the same location and the same name as the family. And what I did was went to import data and I'm going to go find that, that CSV that or that text file, sorry, that I had created. And it's going to bring up this option to do some form of editing and pretty much what goes in is fine. They do have a lot of different file origin options for you if you need something else. As you can see, I already have some additional ones. I know in the example I had just A. But we're going to go add some additional items as well. So we're probably going to do E and F, maybe a G. And just running through this really quickly, just naming it. And then I'm just going to go through and add some numbers here. Really just trying to get an understanding or just something different so we can see how it flexes. Also showing that that stuff does show up when we do load this family into the Revit model. So once I get done with that, I'm going to save that guy as a CSV. And the one thing is you will want to make sure that your file browser settings are turned to where you can see extensions because we will have to rename this guy to a .csv file or .txt. And one thing too is you want to make sure you save it as an MS-DOS CSV because the other forms of CSVs do not work for this. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the end of that CSV to TXT file. And as you can see, I went ahead and erased that, like I said, saving that. And I'm just going to open it up. And now we're going to go ahead and open up a new Revit model. Um, it's going to be the best way to do it. Just waiting for Revit to load up. I went ahead and closed it earlier um, just to have this fresh example. So now I'm going to go and create a new project. It doesn't matter, but uh, we will do an architectural template. And once we get that architectural template open, we will switch back over to our insert tab here select that family that we had created and now you can see there are additional 
D E N F or E N F there for our use. And if you go down and look into the models, I just made this a gen generic model. I could have made it furniture, but you'll see that I do have the options for those additional table sizes. And there you have it. So that's a little bit of a quick example of how to do a lookup table. It can get a little bit more complicated, but thank you for watching. And you can look for us on tpm.com. And you can also subscribe to our TPM Solutions channel on YouTube. Thank you.